Chapter 1. On our third anniversary, I planned to propose to Carolina. Who would have thought that before I could kneel down as her rightful boyfriend, Carolina's first love, Mike, would beat me to it, kneeling in front of her and saying words of proposal. Carolina looked shyly at Mike kneeling before her, her eyes full of joy. The crowd cheered and jeered as if I were the third wheel. I sneered and clapped, casually throwing the bouquet on the ground. Since it's like this, I can only wish you both an everlasting love and a life together until old age. Carolina's smile froze, and she hurried to explain. Mike has a scene recently where he has to propose, and I was just helping him practice. I curled my lips and scoffed. So you used the venue I painstakingly prepared, right? Before Carolina could speak, I took the ring out of my bag and tossed it in front of Mike. Did you prepare a ring? If not, why don't you use mine? Everything today was meticulously planned by me. I had invited a large number of people over just to witness my moment of happiness with Carolina, but it turned out to be a big joke for everyone else. Carolina was stunned when she saw the ring box I threw. Mike looked at me with an innocent face. Ale, I didn't know you were planning to. I cut him off irritably. Are you blind? Couldn't you see it? Everyone here knew, except you. Unexpectedly, my words seemed to trigger something in Carolina. Alex, can't you speak nicely? Do you have to be so sarcastic? In an instant, the whole room went quiet. Everyone's eyes darted back and forth between Carolina and me. I guess they didn't understand why Carolina was so protective of Mike. It wasn't just them. I didn't understand either. Ever since Mike returned to the country, my relationship with Carolina had changed. All her attention shifted to Mike. Every time we fought about it, she would say it was because she was Mike's assistant. I used to console myself with that, but now I know it was all an excuse. Seeing I wasn't speaking, Carolina dragged Mike towards the door. From start to finish, she never thought about picking up that ring box. She stopped and gave me a fierce glare as she passed me. You should think carefully. Did you go too far today? Listening to their footsteps leaving, I laughed again. I laughed at my misplaced sincerity and laughed at how I loved such a woman all these years. The crowd thought I had gone mad and rushed to comfort me. Among their comforting voices, my eyes grew colder, and a certain thought in my mind became more resolute. Chapter 2 Carolina came from a good family, and she was beautiful, making her the object of everyone's admiration at school. Naturally, I liked her too, though it was just a one sided crush. Everyone knew that Carolina had a boyfriend although no one had really seen him, but it was clear to everyone that Carolina liked him very much. So when Carolina kissed me, it felt like a dream, and I was willing to be lost in this dream. Carolina told me she had broken up with him and asked if I would be with her. I knew the allure of an unforgettable first love, but I was still willing to give it a try. In the three years we were together, I was unusually proactive about everything related to our relationship. I didn't dare to hope that Carolina loved me deeply, as long as she was trying to like me, that was enough for me. During those three years, we acted like a normal couple, and I thought Carolina liked me, until Mike returned. Everything changed. I had always thought Carolina was the passive one in our relationship, but Mike proved me wrong. Between them, Carolina was the one taking the initiative. Mike received all the treatment I never got. To say I wasn't jealous would be a lie, but Carolina was still my girlfriend, so I stubbornly believed she still liked me. When Carolina stayed over at Mike's place for the first time, I consoled myself with the excuse that she was just helping him. But as the visits became more frequent and their relationship grew closer, I could no longer fool myself. Whenever I brought it up, Carolina would get very angry, and we would end up arguing. But I would always beg for her forgiveness the next day because I loved her more. Perhaps Carolina knew I would always ask for her forgiveness. After all, those who are favored are often fearless. Until today, during the proposal, I saw the anticipation and excitement in Carolina's eyes, and I finally understood. Carolina, she might never have loved me. She might never have thought about a future with me. Chapter 3. In the end, I sent off all our friends one by one. I started cleaning up the carefully arranged proposal scene. I picked up the disregarded ring box from the floor, opening it. Inside was the ring I had meticulously designed. But Carolina would never understand the thoughtfulness behind this ring because she didn't love me. Just like today. Apart from that brief moment of surprise, she didn't spare a single glance at the ring. There was a photo wall in the room, but there were very few pictures of Carolina and me together. I thought she didn't like taking photos, but after adding Mike as a friend, I realized it wasn't that Carolina didn't like taking photos, she just didn't like taking them with me. She was willing to take many photos with Mike. She was willing to enter the kitchen she hated most for Mike. She would travel far to buy Mike's favorite buns just because he said he wanted some. She would stay by Mike's bedside all night when he was sick. She would comfort Mike when he was feeling down. And me, her so-called boyfriend, had nothing. I could only lick my wounds alone. I tried to resist all this. But all I got was Carolina's cold stares and impatient tone. After tidying up the room, I noticed the wetness on my face. 
I reached out to wipe it and realized I was already in tears. At that moment, my phone beeped. It was Mike's Weibo update. Because of Carolina, I had paid special attention to Mike's Weibo. There were no photos, just a caption. Felt wrong today, but thankfully I have my little cat to comfort me. Instantly, I felt a sharp pain in my heart, and my breath caught. No one understood better than me who this little cat referred to. I closed my eyes and could almost imagine Carolina curled up in Mike's arms at this moment. Chapter 4 When I got home, I looked around at everything familiar and felt a stabbing pain in my chest. This home, from beginning to end, had only been arranged by me. Thinking back, Carolina probably never thought about having a future with me. I walked back to my room like a zombie and lay on the bed. But my gaze unintentionally landed on the camera in the corner. I once dreamed of being a photographer. Capturing the landscapes I wanted to see. In school, everyone said I had a free-spirited vibe. I had often imagined being a photographer with no fixed abode but a full heart. But I put down my camera for Carolina and chose to settle here. At that time, I thought Carolina was the most beautiful scenery I could ever see. I got up and gently wiped the dust off the camera and my mind unconsciously flashed to the words I had once said. I quickly turned on my computer and found the scientific expedition team I had been following. Sure enough, they still had a job posting for a photographer on their public account. I pondered for a long time before finally submitting my application. Even when I fell into a deep sleep on the bed, Carolina still hadn't come home. The next day, just as I got out of the bathroom, I heard the sound of the lock turning, but unlike before, I didn't go to the door to greet Carolina. Instead, I walked to the living room and turned on my computer. As soon as I opened my eyes this morning, I received news that I had passed the initial screening. Now they needed some of my previous work, so, I needed to pick out some good photos to send over. I focused on the computer and didn't notice Carolina's gaze on me. It wasn't until Carolina walked up to me that I looked up at her, but I only glanced at her before continuing with what I was doing. Carolina's face instantly turned cold. Alex. I didn't stop what I was doing and asked impatiently. What's wrong? Carolina had never been treated with such a tone before. Alex, what are you doing? Are you still mad about yesterday? You, I'm not mad. I'm just working. Yesterday, it was you who spoke rudely first. It's already good that Mike didn't ask for an apology. You shouldn't. I frowned and looked at Carolina. I said I wasn't mad. Carolina's words were stuck in her throat by my response. Seeing the, sent successfully, message on the computer, I stood up. Since, you're not mad, I'll forgive you. From now on, you. I didn't care what Carolina was saying and walked past her. Just as I reached the door, Carolina's voice sounded behind me. Alex, what are you doing? What do you want? I looked at her in confusion. What do you mean? I'm just going to my room to get my camera. After speaking, I didn't wait for Carolina to respond and went into the room. When I came out with the camera, Carolina was already gone. Chapter 5 In the following days, I was busy outside taking photos. I thought after what happened last time, Carolina wouldn't come looking for me for a while but I was wrong. When I got to the door, I heard voices from inside. I frowned because it sounded like more than one person. I opened the door and saw Mike sitting on the sofa. My eyes darkened, and I saw Carolina busy in the kitchen. Carolina brought the cut fruit to Mike and said to me, Mike will be staying here for a while. Also, please tidy up the room and make it available for him. I clenched the keys in my hand, feeling a chill in my heart, but I just smiled slightly. Sure, I'll tidy it up in a bit. Carolina looked surprised for a moment. Fine. If you can tidy it up now, that would be best. I didn't look at them again and went to my room. Soon after, the doorbell rang, and Carolina went to answer it. It was the delivery person, and Carolina happily took the food. She brought it to Mike, but then she noticed there were only two dishes and a bowl of rice. She looked at me unhappily. Why is there so little food, and it's potatoes which Mike doesn't like? I sneered, walked over, and picked up the food, because this is my meal, not yours. Both of their expressions froze. I pretended not to see and started eating my food. What did it matter to me if Mike didn't like potatoes? I liked potatoes. And that was enough. Alex, are you still mad at me? I'll apologize to you. Right. Why should you apologize? Mike, you did nothing wrong. Carolina interrupted. I just kept eating and casually browsed information about the expedition team. Seeing that I wasn't playing along, Carolina said angrily, Alex, are you giving me an attitude? I shook my head and looked at her calmly. No, I'm just handling some things. What things? You. I frowned. I don't have work. I even disdainfully curled my lips and looked at her impatiently. I took my food to the dining room, and Carolina's face turned pale and then read from my words. Chapter 6. Soon, I received the news that I had passed the final review by the expedition team, and they notified me to undergo a medical examination. When I arrived at the hospital, I unexpectedly ran into Carolina and Mike. They were heading towards the obstetrics department. 
I followed them and saw them pick up a stack of reports from the self-service payment machine. Mike's palm gently touched Carolina's belly as he held her close. They didn't notice the report that fell from their hands. I carefully bent down to pick it up. It was a pregnancy test and a paternity test report. The mother's column had Carolina's name and ID. The father's column read, Mike. At that moment, I felt all the blood in my body freeze. I walked out of the hospital like a zombie. They already had a child. So, what did that make me? Mike, in his career's rising phase, would never publicly acknowledge Carolina. What was Carolina planning to do? Did she want me to be the fallback guy? To be the father of that child? To help Mike raise his child? A flood of thoughts surged through my mind. All my unwillingness and grievances overwhelmed me at this moment. Just then, a call came in. It was the expedition team's leader asking if I was sure about joining the team as a photographer. If I was still hesitant at the hospital, my answer was now crystal clear. I'm sure. After hanging up, I looked back at the hospital. I knew Carolina must be eagerly anticipating the child's arrival, but only because it was Mike's child. I gave a bitter smile. Fine. Let it be. These past few years, I was just blind. Chapter 7. I quickly went home to pack my things and booked a flight to another city. At this moment, my disgust for Carolina was at its peak. I even sold the house before leaving. How could I let Mike live comfortably in the house I bought? Back then, I had gritted my teeth to buy this big house so that Carolina could live a better life with me. To buy this house, I didn't know how many drinks I had to take or how many sleepless nights I had to endure. But I believed I was happy because I thought I was fighting for a beautiful future with Carolina. Later, I realized I was wrong. Carolina didn't care about any of it, even if it were hard times, as long as it was with Mike, she would be willing. Thinking about this, I shook my head, trying to stop thinking about Carolina. I turned off my phone and boarded the plane. As soon as I got off the plane, I saw messages from Carolina. You sold the house. Are you crazy? Alex, where are you? Answer the phone. You're not answering my calls. What do you want? Alex, you will regret this. I raised my eyebrows. Surprised at how quickly the real estate agency worked, but it made sense. The house had a good location and lighting, and I priced it reasonably. It wasn't surprising that it sold quickly. I didn't reply to Carolina and decisively chose to delete her as a contact. Carolina's messages reminded me that I hadn't deleted her contact information. I quickly deleted all contact information related to Carolina. I also unfollowed Mike on Weibo. In hindsight, I realized how ridiculous I was. Constantly monitoring Mike. For Carolina. I had turned myself into a jealous clown. I looked up at the endless blue sky and took a deep breath. But it's okay. My new life was about to begin. I didn't receive any more messages from Carolina. I guess she didn't care to contact me. She was probably secretly happy. After all, with me out of the picture, Mike could take my place. Chapter 8. A month had passed. And during this time, I had traveled to several cities with the expedition team. This was the life I had once dreamed of. It wasn't until I had it that I realized how much I had missed. But now. It's not too late to have it. That day, we finished a task at dawn. The team leader said we would have a few days off. I thought about how my place was just in the neighboring city, so I booked a flight home. As soon as I got to the doorstep, I was completely stunned. After adjusting my emotions, I just wanted to pretend I didn't see the person in front of me. But as soon as I took a few steps, Carolina stood in my way. Looking at Carolina blocking my path, an inexplicable impatience surged in my heart. I pulled out an expensive cigarette from my pocket and started smoking. The nicotine helped me resist the urge to leave. Why haven't you replied to my messages all this time? Carolina's words broke the silence between us. I looked up at the woman in front of me again. She had lost weight, and her face showed signs of weariness and exhaustion. I rarely saw her look so haggard. Most of the time, she had the appearance of a spoiled princess, always looking at me with a slightly disdainful gaze. But now, her eyes were red-rimmed and she was trying hard to hold back her tears while looking straight at me. I looked away, unwilling to look at her any longer. Surrounded by smoke, I pulled the corners of my mouth. We broke up. Carolina. Carolina's face turned pale instantly. You never told me. I sneered. Can I say it now? I don't agree. I don't agree to break up. I frowned. Carolina. What's the point? You don't love me. Isn't breaking up what you want? Her expression froze. Then she looked at me in panic. Are you talking about Mike? I told you there's nothing between us. Why don't you believe me? I coldly watched Carolina's clumsy performance in front of me. Even now, she's still pretending. I really admire Carolina's acting skills. I said coldly, you should go be an actress. Seeing her open her mouth to explain something, I suddenly lost the desire to continue the conversation. Do you have any other business, Miss Carolina? If not, I'm leaving. With that, I bypassed her and tried to leave. But Carolina reached out and grabbed my sleeve. Am I bothering you? Do you not have time tonight? Then maybe next time. 
I didn't want to have any more interactions with Carolina, so I interrupted her directly. I am indeed busy tonight. After all, someone is waiting for me at home. After speaking, I glanced at Carolina with dissatisfaction. She had never been treated like this by me before, and she understood the underlying meaning of my words, turning even paler. And there won't be a next time. I don't like my life being disturbed by people I dislike. If you don't leave, fine, then I will. With that, I pulled my hand free and left straight away. A strange emotion surged in my heart. It was like something you had wanted for a long time was finally yours. But unfortunately, you no longer needed it. Chapter 9 That night, I didn't go home to sleep. I saw that Carolina didn't seem to plan on leaving. As if she was determined to wait at my doorstep. So, I spent the night drinking at a bar and then slept at a nearby hotel. I thought that after I said what I did, Carolina would leave once she saw me walk away. But when I returned home, I saw her squatting there. She was squatting with her eyes closed, seemingly resting. She was even wearing high heels. I ignored Carolina and went to open the door. You're back. The sound of the key turning woke Carolina up, and she stood up unsteadily. I didn't look at her and walked straight inside to pour myself a glass of water. The alcohol from last night made my stomach uncomfortable. From the doorway, Carolina's voice came. Did you drink last night? You smell strongly of alcohol. You have a stomach condition. You shouldn't drink too much. So, you know I have a stomach condition. My sarcastic words cut her off, and she suddenly fell silent, looking at me with those same eyes, as if I were the one at fault, as if I were the one who trampled on others' sincerity, used others, and finally cheated. I closed my eyes, feeling a wave of exhaustion. Carolina, why are you here? We're done. You can go live your happy life with Mike now. Saying this, I went to close the door, but Carolina held it open. I looked down at her, my eyes full of impatience and indifference. She seemed hurt by my gaze, looked away, and murmured, Alex, can we talk? I suddenly laughed. Why should I talk just because you want to? Do you really think I'm a dog, coming and going at your command? I stepped back, looking at her with a smile that didn't reach my eyes. What? Mike doesn't want to go public with you, so you're coming back to me, the simp. Carolina's face turned deathly pale for a moment but I pretended not to notice and continued speaking. Want to talk? Sure. Bring back the engagement ring I prepared for you, and we'll talk. Carolina's expression went blank for a moment. Of course, she must have forgotten about the ring. Without waiting for her response, I closed the door. After a while, I heard Carolina's muffled voice from outside. Wait for me, Alex. Listening to the sound of her high heels gradually fading away, I finally couldn't hold myself up and slumped to the floor. Chapter 10 I thought Carolina wouldn't come back for a long time. After all, how could she find that ring? I had given it away casually, but reality hit me hard again. Looking at the ring in my hand, I couldn't understand how Carolina found it. I thought it might be a replica, but the letters I had carefully engraved inside the band were there. Even the material and texture were exactly the same as the original. I knew Carolina had indeed found the original ring. I sighed. I had said it, so I couldn't go back on my word. It's rare that you could find this ring. My reaction seemed to surprise Carolina. She started to explain again. There really was nothing between Mike and me. We've been over for a long time. I gave a cold laugh. Are you sure? Alex, listen to me. Seeing Carolina's flustered expression and her mouth opening to explain, my mind flashed back to what I saw at the hospital. Alex, can you give me another chance? I can explain everything. I laughed humorlessly. You can explain. Lie to me. But what about the child in your belly? As a man, it's hard not to mind being cheated on. Mike's existence would always be a thorn in my heart, especially now, with Carolina carrying someone else's child. Carolina's eyes widened slightly. You. How do I know? Right, Carolina. I saw it with my own eyes. Alex, listen to me. Seeing Carolina reach out to grab my hand, anger surged within me. Don't touch me. She stumbled back a few steps. Ale. I. Carolina. What right do you have to ask for my forgiveness? You're carrying another man's child. Why should I forgive you? Chapter 11. Looking at Carolina's pained expression, I couldn't help but feel a flicker of satisfaction. But this satisfaction was mixed with other emotions swirling inside me. I turned my eyes away, afraid that if I looked at Carolina, I might soften. Enough. Go back. Don't come looking for me anymore. I have things to do. I turned and walked towards the kitchen, planning to prepare lunch. Carolina's tearful voice sounded behind me. Alex, didn't you say that if I found the ring, you'd consider talking to me? We haven't even. Haven't we talked enough? Besides. Now you're the one begging me. I get to decide how this goes, don't I? I turned and looked coldly at Carolina. Carolina, this is what it's like to be a simp. Oh, I forgot. I was the one simping for you. I smirked. Go back. Carolina, you're just not used to being without your caretaker. Or maybe you just need someone to clean up your mess. No, it's not like that. Seeing Carolina's tear-streaked face, 
A wave of irritation surged within me. I grabbed her hand and dragged her to the door, closing it quickly before she could react. Soon after, I heard Carolina sobs outside the door. If you keep crying at my door, I don't mind calling the police to report a disturbance. Carolina cried for a while longer but eventually left. Chapter 12. But this time, I seemed to have underestimated Carolina's determination, because I saw her again at my doorstep. I didn't want to entangle with her any further and stepped past her towards the elevator. Alex, I was wrong. I really was. Please forgive me. I'm begging you. Hearing Carolina's pleading tone, my steps faltered for a moment. From behind, her tearful voice continued. The child was just an accident. I didn't mean for it to happen. If you don't like it, I can abort. No. What if you abort and then blame me for it? I won't. Alex. I. But I didn't want to hear any more of her explanations. I just coldly watched the elevator doors slowly close. I didn't expect her to follow me downstairs, but because she was wearing high heels, she stumbled and fell at the lobby desk. I turned around and saw Carolina slumped on the ground through the glass doors. She covered her face with her hands, crying continuously, murmuring apologies. I bit my lip, suppressing the emotion surging inside, and approached her. Carolina, I am not your dog. You can't just throw me aside when you don't want me and call me back when you do. I started to walk away, but Carolina grabbed the hem of my shirt, looking down. I saw her tear-streaked face gazing up at me. I used to think that if Carolina ever wanted to break up, I'd beg her not to. But reality turned out to be completely different from my imagination. Alex, don't go. I really can't live without you. I really like you. Hearing Carolina say these words, I felt no joy. If she had said these things earlier, maybe everything would have been different. I pulled her hand off my shirt. Carolina, I still say the same thing. We are done. That's it. With that, I stood up and quickly walked away. It wasn't until I could no longer hear her crying that I allowed myself to fully release my emotions. Saying I wasn't sad or heartbroken would be a lie. After all, I had truly loved Carolina for so many years. But how could I trust Carolina? There was always Mike between us. No, perhaps there was more than just Mike between us. After all, from the beginning, our statuses were unequal, and it was wrong from the start. That night, I tossed and turned, unable to sleep, with the image of Carolina crying on the ground flashing in my mind. The first thing I did when I got up was call the security guard to ask if there was anyone lying near the elevator. When I heard, no, my heart finally felt at ease. Chapter 13. I thought Carolina had finally given up. After all, I hadn't seen her come looking for me in over 10 days. An unknown emotion surged within me. I couldn't tell if it was relief or regret, but it didn't take long before I saw Carolina by the roadside. She looked weaker than she did a while ago. I wanted to pretend not to see her, but she walked straight towards me. There was no avoiding it so I didn't bother. I pressed my lips together and looked at her, silently asking what she wanted. She seemed very weak, and her voice was faint. Alex, I've aborted the child. Can you give me another chance now? I was stunned on the spot, but before I could react, Carolina collapsed to the ground. I quickly picked her up and rushed her to the hospital. After paying all the fees, I looked at Carolina lying weakly in the hospital bed, and I suddenly felt very tired, but I was still very clear that I could not soften. In fact, during these past days, I finally realized that my life could go on without Carolina. In fact, without Carolina, I could live better, happier. I enjoyed my current life very much and didn't want to go back to the past, so I couldn't soften towards Carolina. I was very clear that I no longer loved Carolina as I did before. I think I had finally let go of Carolina. I placed the prescribed medicine on the bedside table and was about to leave, but suddenly, something grabbed my hand. Looking down, I saw that Carolina had woken up at some point and was holding onto my hand. Unwilling to let go, I sighed. Carolina, we can't go back to how things were. Why are you doing this? Why can't we go back? I already. Do you think it's just because of the child? I couldn't help but shout at Carolina. But seeing her hurt expression, I softened my tone. You know we can't go back to how things were. Tears slid down her cheeks, and she pressed her lips together without speaking. Still gripping my shirt tightly, I opened my mouth, wanting to say something, but could only sigh. Alex, are you worried about Mike? I've already resigned. There's nothing between us. I've truly always loved you. Hearing Carolina say she loved me no longer stirred any emotion in me. I just couldn't distinguish my feelings for him at first. Later, I realized I didn't love him. It was just youthful resentment. The child was also just an accident from a drunken night. I really, I interrupted her before she could continue. Carolina, but I can't get over it. Every day that I'm with you, I'll imagine you two kissing. And besides, Carolina, I don't love you anymore. Please, don't come back to bother me. Okay. Carolina wavered at my words, and I knew they had hurt her, but I had to be harsh because I couldn't leave her any hope. Only this way, it would be better for both of us. After I finished speaking, Carolina didn't say anything more, 
The room fell silent, and Carolina lowered her head, lost in thought. I wasn't in a hurry, just waited quietly for her to understand. After a while, Carolina's muffled voice echoed in the room. Alex, is there really no chance at all? My gaze fell on the bustling street outside, the noise outside forming a sharp contrast with the silence in the room. Scenes from the past few years flashed through my mind. I smiled. Yes, the night I proposed. My love for you began to fade. I felt the hands holding mine tighten, followed by something wet falling on my hand. I knew Carolina was crying again. It was rare. Before, she rarely showed too much emotion for me. Now, almost every time she saw me, she cried. I felt the grip on my hand gradually weaken. I knew Carolina had given up. The medicine is on the table. Remember to take it. With that, I turned and left the room. As the door closed, Carolina's tearful, I'm sorry, reached my ears once more. The hallway was bathed in sunlight, covering me. I looked at the closed door, and a complex emotion surged within me. Behind that door were my three years of youth, the love I had given with all my might. But perhaps life would always have regrets, so I didn't need to be trapped in the past. Now, I should embrace the future that belonged only to me with all my strength. Chapter 14 After that, Carolina never bothered me again. The focus of the expedition team gradually shifted overseas. I spent less and less time in the country. The next time I saw Carolina was at my wedding. I was greeting guests at the entrance when someone brought over a pair of wristwatches. There was also a note with handwriting I knew all too well. It was Carolina's handwriting. In 10 miles of spring breeze, I congratulate you on this auspicious day. May you have peace, joy, and fulfillment of your wishes. I looked up and caught a glimpse of a white figure leaving. It looked as if she were fleeing in haste. I smiled and put the note back in its place. Perhaps, this was the best ending for Carolina and me.